my favorite TV personalities is Stephen Colbert. He's an American comedian, and he hosts The Late Show on CBS. He's very open about his Catholic faith, although he readily admits just because he practices his faith, in no way does that mean he's good at it. And he's known for his faith and joy, so I was really surprised recently when I was reading about his life and found out that at the age of 10, he actually went through a traumatic experience when his father and two of his brothers died suddenly in a plane crash. And this led Stephen Colbert eventually to reject his Catholic faith, and he became what he said to be just a bitter atheist. But one day, at the age of 22, he says he was walking down the cold street of Chicago on this winter day, and some man walked up to him suddenly and handed him a Bible. For some reason, Colbert said he opened up the Bible and he saw an index page. And one of the first topics he, he read was anxiety. Colbert remembers flipping to the recommended passage in Matthew 6 and reading Jesus' words. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Stephen Colbert said, and I quote, Immediately, I was enlightened. For the first time in my life, the words of Christ jumped out off the page. It's like he spoke directly to me. My burden was lifted, and my life has never been the same ever since. Over the past two weeks, I've been sharing about how every time we open up our Bibles, this is a time of good soil in which we allow God to enter into our lives like a mustard seed and work a miracle in our lives. And Stephen Colbert's story helps us to understand this once again and take this key insight even further. I want to give you a visual of what this key insight looks like. I brought my grandpa's Bible again. We know that the Bible is God's story of salvation. That's what the Bible is. And when we open up our Bibles, we know how it begins. It's in the book of Genesis. We know that we are created out of God's goodness and love. That's why we exist. And when we turn to the end of the Bible, we know what our purpose is in life. We are destined, we are called to share in God's goodness and love forever. That's where we're headed. And when we open up the Bible, we realize that we are actually in God's story of salvation. God's story of salvation is actually taking place in your life right now. So every time we open up the Bible, it can be a reminder for us that we are actually living in God's story of salvation right now. It's taking place in your life. And every time you open up the Bible, you can realize that your entire life, your past, your present, your future, your entire life is part of God's story of salvation that's taking place right now. So when Stephen Colbert opened up the Bible on that cold winter day in Chicago at the age of 22, and he felt Jesus' words just jump off the page and speak directly to him, Colbert began to realize this important truth, that his entire life is part of God's story of salvation. And this was an experience from a real experience of falling in love with God. And when he did that, he realized that he's been created out of God's goodness and love. He's called to share in God's goodness and love forever in heaven. And even more so, in such a profound way, he realized what St. Paul says in today's second reading was coming true in his own life. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God. This one verse could be life-changing for us today. And it wants to be life-changing for us today. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God. Jesus proved this statement to be true. Jesus loved his Father and his entire life, all things in Jesus' life, worked together for good, including his death on the cross. 
The greatest evil that ever happened brought about the greatest good that ever happened, our salvation. And Jesus' ability to draw good out of evil is a power that's still at work today in our lives. It can be at work today in our lives. So Jesus, on Good Friday, at the heart of God's story of salvation, he drew this good out of evil. And every time we open up our Bibles, we enter into that story of salvation. We can begin to realize that all things in our life can work together for good when we are in love with God. Stephen Colbert, all things in his life, not most things, not 99% of the things that happened, all things. And that includes this traumatic event. That includes the death of his father and two brothers. And Colbert shares, check out this interview he has with Anderson Cooper on CNN. It's a profound event when he shares about the gratitude that he has for life now. And we know that Stephen Colbert also has this deep faith that his father and two brothers are with Jesus in heaven. And Stephen Colbert as well has a deep ability to show compassion to so many people who are suffering around the world going through similar things. So this is a miracle that God wants to work in our lives too today. Not just in Stephen Colbert's life, but our life today. To know that all things in our life, all past events, all present struggles, all future hopes and dreams we have, all things can work together for good when we are in love with God. On a practical way, practical level here, one of the clear signs of what we love is how we spend our time. One of the clear signs of what we love is how we spend our time. And if the Bible is God's love letter to us, then a good way to see our love for God can be how often we read the Bible. These are hard-hitting words for me too. It's a challenge, but it's such a good challenge to have. And over the last two weeks, I've been sharing about this challenge from Father Larry Richards. No Bible, no breakfast, no Bible, no bed. Try it out this week. Try it out. And if you want, you can use this one verse from Romans, chapter 8, verse 28. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God. Imagine if you woke up in the morning and you read this verse, and you really took it to heart, to know that all things that happen... For this day, all things will work together for good when I'm in love with God. And at the end of the day, before you fall asleep, you just remind yourself once again, all things that have happened to me today have worked together for my good when I am in love with God. To conclude, I just want to reflect upon today's first reading. So imagine if God appeared to you tonight in a dream, just like King Solomon. And God said, ask what I should give you. One wish. Whatever, it, whatever you want, whatever it might be, I'll make it happen for you. What would you ask God for? Honestly, what would you ask if God granted you one wish tonight? Maybe like Stephen Colbert, you'll think back to a past event in your life. It might even be the death of a loved one. And you would pray that God would erase that event and you could be with your loved one right now. Or maybe you'll think about this present time, this time of pandemic, and you'll say, God, all I want is for this coronavirus to end and life go back to normal. Maybe you'll think about the future, your hopes and dreams for the future. Maybe you'll say to God, I want to be rich and famous. I want to make an impact in my life. But I think that if all of us truly went into the deepest desires of our heart, we would all say to Jesus, the one thing that I want above all is to know that all things in my life, all past sufferings, including the death of loved ones, all present trials, including this pandemic, all future hopes and dreams for my life, all things will work together for good, will be a part 
of the great story of salvation that's taking place right now. So this is the invitation that Jesus gives us every single time we open up our Bibles. This is the treasure hidden in the field that Jesus speaks about in today's Gospel that we all want to find. This is the one pearl of great price that all of us would joyfully sell everything for. To know that all things in our life, all past trials, all present difficulties, all future dreams, everything that happens in our entire life will somehow work together for good. So as we prepare for those who are so privileged to be here at Mass to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, in which he wants to enter into your story right now. That's what he's doing in the Eucharist. He's entering into your story. He wants you to experience salvation today. Ask him for the grace to open up your Bible more often. Ask him for the grace to take on this challenge. No Bible, no breakfast. No Bible, no bed. So that one day, we can all say with St. Paul, I know that all things work together for good because I love God.